Ah, uh, yeah, they be doing stuff. I feel you, like know? you can use the mic stand at least like once, maybe twice sometime. You know? I actually, only time I used the mic stand was in the first band I ever had in like t- first live metal band at least in like 2011, 12. So you did vocals at some point. I didn't know that. Oh, I did not do vocals. I was just trolling you. It but. was straight up uh, one of those things where it's like, oh, well, someone's got to talk in between songs. It was in a three piece instrumental. Yep. Couple dudes just hanging out, you know, partying, smoking, drinking. The classic live in, live trilogy in of just camaraderie. <laughs> oh, we get along. Let's play as fast and technical as we can. Have personally, like, not having any sort of like music theory knowledge or anything yeah. like going to lessons or anything. It was all kind of like self taught, like, learn by ear. Oh, I'm watching these videos, but I also uh, like learn tabs too. Mm-hmm. But like, there were certain moments in my life where it's like, oh, here's a C, here's a oh, that's a D, you know, and kind of like working it out that way. But I don't know, just the aspect of uh, having like an early knowledge of that. Yeah. Vital, but also like going my own route, like sounding it out almost. When did that start for you? So that metal band I was talking about, that was about 2012. We were like doing stuff. And And how old are you then? Christ. 17, 18, okay, okay. around that. I feel like so it's, it's kind of late to get into the, the band scene. So you, like, prior to that, 13 and yeah, what? the funniest thing ever is that the first like live band scenario yeah. playing in front of people <clears throat> was actually where I was originally from and outside of Charlotte, North Carolina in, in South Carolina. And I was playing at a, uh, like a Wednesday night youth group playing songs about Jesus. Basically it was, you know, like, imagine the instrumentals of U2, but, like, Jesus. It's like that King. one South Park episode. Jesus Just replace King. the lyrics with Jesus, and it's, it's you know, delay guitar. I mean, don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah. Some of those songs still stick in my head because of the hook. Yeah. The delay on the guitar, like, tones. Like, yeah. that was just so embedded in me, and I was like, okay, how can I justify doing this? Okay, so I'm listening to, like, Devil Wears Prada, Oxford's yeah. Red, and Pending Doom. I'm like, oh, my God, what are you listening to? Oh, no, no, it, 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 it's about Jesus. Don't worry. I'm, and I'm, I'm not personally, like, religious myself, you know, live day to day, be good to people. Very simple, how I go by. But yeah. those moments, like, having, like, one of the guitar players be like, here's a lyric sheet, but over each chord change, yeah. here's a C, here's a G, here's a D. And I kind of learned that way. And then did that for a couple years, moved up here, did its very similar thing uh in western massachusetts for a couple months and that's how i kind of i kind of met some friends that knew these guys that Mm -hmm. needed a bass player and i've always played bass which back to segue into that when did that all start that was probably well i want to talk about this church music for a moment yeah 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 yeah. yeah. i'll just put that on the back burner you guys don't got to worry about that please 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 we will keep moving through no 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 (laughs) no, i'm just joking yeah yeah the the church thing Um, and youth group thing like it Catches a lot of people I'm, off guard. No, I'm curious because yeah. I think that uh, I'm musically ignorant, but I think that mm-hmm. I've heard often that, like, uh, yeah, it's a very common entry into music for just a fundamental four-piece band of simple stuff and simple foundational yeah, you know, song structures. And Yeah, very four-chordy, very verse, pre-chorus, chorus, ver- yeah, very it's standard format. Yeah, it's segue yeah. into, uh, does that, like, does that song structure still resonate with you? Do you, like... Is that still how songs exist oh, in your brain? You know, in a way, like sublimely, just because yeah. in the sense yeah. of, yes, yeah, song structure, but also back to what I mentioned of tones. Like, yeah. that was my first essence of like, oh, why do I, why do I sound like shit right now? <laughs> oh, yeah, you got to change these strings. And like, you know, at an early age of like yeah. 13, 14, I'm like, oh, my God, $20, $30 for strings. Oh, my God. God, what am I gonna do? Like, this yeah. is a no guitar player shit. Like, Dude, drummers, you a rich musician, bro. Drummers are straight up just like dealing with it from the start. Yeah, but I'm yeah. just like, holy shit, 20, 30 bucks. But yeah. yeah, man, it was a different realm of what I was already listening to, which was like you yeah. know classic rock, metal of you know all eras for the most part. Heaviest I was going was like you know like the impending doom stuff. Yes, and cannibal corpse and also getting into basically every genre i could at that point because i was like oh yeah. i just wanted to play that's yeah. why i was doing that youth group stuff even at that time i wasn't personally religious i just wanted sure. to play yeah. met some great people from it and like still in contact with them you Definitely. know it's super cool but like i just like went my own way yeah and was like hey guys i'm gonna go find some like real heavy <laughs> shit so 
don't disown me. And they're super cool. <laughs> Hell yeah. You know. Hell yeah. It's all about mindset and where you're at in life and how you treat people. Of course. You know? of not course, not yeah. so much just personal belief. Like, you believe in that thing? Sick. I'm doing my thing. We're cool. Yeah. yeah. But can be a iffy topic on some subjects. But, but sure. at the end of the day, just all trying to hang out. We're here maybe 80, 90 years if we're really <laughs> lucky or unlucky, depending how you look at it. So just chill the fuck out. Be cool. Yeah. Fucking do what you love. Yeah. And, uh. The church music, it's always kind of just like stemming with me, the whole tone aspect of yep. it, you know? Interesting. That, that's really what stuck, I would think. Yes, strong stru- song structure and everything, but And it is tones. bass. You mentioned that you started playing bass and that's always been like the thing. And then we had this, this carrot dangled in front of us. Of a mic stand that you used somewhere in a bad band. Oh, yes. Yes. So back to that. Yeah, we learned bass in kind of a traditional structure. Yeah. When does it become this uh, hedonistic, weird, yelly, angry guy? Oh, uh, well, that's kind of just always been in there. That's always (laughs) been in there. It's just like, you know, younger ages of like 12, 13, 14. It was a little bit more closeted. Like, oh, I can't let my mom find that. For sure. Dying dying fetus record. or you know. But my thing was... uh, when I first got into bass, it was probably about 12 years old. Friend down the street had a birthday. We uh-huh. all went to Sam Ash together. I didn't know what the fuck it was. <laughs> Heard some sweet ass, like, bam, 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 like simple cliche slap yep. bass. And I was just like, oh shit, that's fucking cool. And my friend's mom ended up buying me like an $80 bass and a cheap combo amp. And oh, it started there. I was like, oh, this is it. And that's to a put it, mom. T- dude, she was super sweet. Her name was Ann, uh, Annie. And my friend Dan, I haven't seen him in probably like 15 years, but Is again. So they're in the Carolinas. Oh, yeah, yeah, eternally grateful. I think they like, you know, moved about and shit, but. Living their dreams. But the thing is, though, like that little moment, like, holy shit, when you really look at it and yeah. when I look at it, I'm like, yeah, that moment saved my life. 100%. That's a weird one. Without moment. a doubt. So there were, even then, I was already like, oh, dude, this, I don't want to let people know I'm listening to Slayer. You know, it's yep. like I'm young, but it's also like, I didn't want to like, between friends and family, I didn't want to like, holy shit, this kid's possessed. Like, no, nah, it's just some cool stuff that I like, you know, of all like metal yeah. hardcore genre yeah. in, a, in a sense, you know. There is a really weird identity crisis there. And I, I had the same thing growing up of like, I like this thing and I know I'm not crazy because I like this thing, but yes. everyone else is going to think I'm crazy if they know I like this thing. And but also, here's out? these yeah. Tony Hawk games. <laughs> yep. We don't know what the soundtrack is. So we just think it's a skateboarding game. Yeah. But like, whoa, yep. punk metal hardcore, that yeah. was like it. But that had always been there, that angst, that, yeah. That, uh, oh, dude, this is the energy. Mm-hmm. It's always energy exerts energy. The bands that always are in the limelight or always talked about are always the ones performing. Sure. You know, yeah, you have some bands that can stand still and it's because they're playing, and but it's the energy exerting energy, you know. But that came into like this transition period where I moved from the Carolinas, moved up to here to Western Massachusetts area, and, uh, it's funny because came up, I was like, all right, I'll play in another youth group, whatever, you know. And I was fine with it. Totally cool, you know, just like playing music in general. I don't care. Slayer to Sinatra, I think it's all cool, you know. <laughs> that's and awesome. it, that's the mindset I've always had. Keep that open ear. It's, uh, yeah. it's You don't want to stick to red, yellow, and blue. You want to mess with that color palette as a Definitely. painter or something. That's you know? an, I'm always working towards that. I think I, I think before I started working in music, I was much more like, yo, Taylor Swift is the worst artist I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> And I think now children. Yeah. (laughs) But now I'm like, yo, I am the idiot there. Like she sells way too many records, way too many people like her for her. Why is she so smart? Why didn't I write that? Why didn't I think of that vision? I'm the idiot. So then it's, yeah. Yeah. How, what is the, what is the beauty there that I'm missing? And it's been a fun game of like, yeah, from what is it? Slayer to Sinatra of like, there is beauty everywhere. And I don't want to listen to all of that spectrum all the time, Yes, but there is a power of being able to, yeah, pull out both records and be like, oh damn, I don't, I don't like this. Maybe this isn't my my favorite beverage that I've mm-hmm. ever consumed, but like, this is still a good beverage. It is. And, <laughs> and it's one of those things too, where like, you're all, at least for me, maybe I'm just like always constantly thinking of like, not just not constantly, but where I come from and mm-hmm. like, Oh, I started here. You know, I was just thinking about a picture. I took of you at a VFW in Waterbury. I think dude. I was playing with, uh, you remember Jake Mackey? Uh, of course. Shout dude. out my, Shout ra- out my, 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 my bald racing <laughs> homie. 
He loves that shit. Um, but he used to call me Camera Boy, and I took a picture uh, dude, of you. I hope he hears this because Camera Boy still warms my heart. I, it's so degrading. I don't know why it it is a degrading <laughs> nickname. It is not a good thing to call. Oh, someone, we're gonna keep it. But for we're some gonna... reason, it warms every corner um, of my heart. Dude, you were lying on the uh, ground to get a shot. Dude, if you Never have forget that, that work ethic, that's what just, it stuck to me with you. I appreciate that. If you Absolutely. have that, I'll put it in the video. I don't know if I have it. But if you do, I have it. We'll have to dig. It, it, we'll yeah. have to dig. I, got, I, I know exactly where it's at in my <laughs> Facebook feed. Actually, king, king, dude. I know exactly where uh, it's at year wise. But yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's a yeah. fun like uh, that. I don't know if I needed to lay on the floor, but it was me. Uh, so for the context of people listening, mm-hmm. uh, is that yeah? So Justin's playing a show. Or I guess you weren't playing at that specific time, but yeah, someone. No, was no, no. Playing. I was playing at the show, but we were like one of the first bands on, I think. Gotcha. But it was like a memorial show. I yeah. can't remember the exact context. I just remember it was like a yep. somber scene, but everyone was trying to get lifted up by the music. Uh, forget tomorrow. Forget tomorrow. I remember half-hearted played. Yep. Um, shout out Jay. King. Episode one, King, the episode OG. Episode. Um, but yeah, so he's gonna tell me to go. I'm home. shooting local shows. I'm a couple <laughs> months into shooting, and at some point in the show, to get the angle, mm-hmm. I like lay down on the ground to kind of get the upwards angle. Yep. Uh, for my photo friends out there, part of the problem here is that I only had a 50 millimeter lens on a crop sensor, which means nothing to most people. But basically, what it means is that nothing I was, I had like a really zoomed in camera, and in a not very zoomed in, like a very tight space, and I had a lot of zoom. So to get photos of people, I had to get up or get down because like looking straight on would be like a picture of just your nose. Yeah. So I had to get to the floor or the, in Point Beach, there was this fridge I had to climb on top of (laughs) and take photos from there. And it was, yeah, it was kind of a funny thing of like, people were like, oh, your work ethic's great. And it's like, no, no, no. Like I literally just can't afford the gear to do this right. So I just have to make this work. You're making it work with what you have. 100%. Yeah. And and it's not like just because what you have, whatever it might be, again, musicians, gear. Yep. Uh, photographer's same gear thing, yeah. it's all the same shit it's all going in the same cases for the most yeah. part but it's one of those things where it's like uh, no i'm still gonna go if i don't have that thing to make it look like this i'm yeah. gonna do my best because yeah. it's your product yep you you, yeah. pro- you try and be proud of the product you put yeah. out and i think also it's fun to explore all the options oh yeah i think uh, and music is probably the same thing of being sitting in the studio and you hear the mm-hmm. the the drums or you know the 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 backbone of the song you go oh, okay there's a hundred different bass lines i could write here yes Let's piece through oh i, I and, hear songs even with like heavy bass in the mix and i'm mm-hmm. like that's sick but i i think this way but also i see what you did yeah, it, yeah. i'm sure photography videography painting any sort of artistic mm-hmm. form i think photo is interesting specifically there because it's a game of numbers where i've always looked at it as like mm-hmm. i think with a song you release one song or you yeah, maybe you write 10 songs to get pared mm-hmm. down to a little bit but like the with photos you'll take 2000 photos in a night and i'll post 10 of them like yeah. less than 1% ever. Yeah. So it's just a game of numbers to me of like, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I can't take a good photo, but if I take a lot of photos, one of them will be good. <laughs> the, the crazy aspect of just the background. It's like, yeah. I feel like people see your end product, uh, end product with, uh, let's say, a live footage yeah. or, or a recording that you did. They're like, oh, that's awesome. It's like, okay, so it's about five, 2 to 5% <laughs> actually performing, but like the other yeah. 95% is just like, screaming in my head like yeah. you know yep. but getting it together you yeah. know and making shit happen yeah and of course the stage version of that is like yeah there was i played the song on stage and hopefully you liked my show but mm-hmm. what you didn't see was all the troubleshooting of all the tech of all the times my amp wouldn't plug in because yeah. cable didn't work and i couldn't find the jack for this thing or yeah i just didn't have time to record didn't want to do it yep. didn't get to the studio my car broke down like all the hundreds yep. of problems that were solved before you're on the stage yeah. yeah and i know you and i have experienced this not only personally in our own <laughs> careers but also like working together you know in recent yes. times we've had yes. ups and downs but yes. you know what anytime you know you're at the helm and you're calling the shots you always fucking nail it i appreciate that. you know i've seen that. it in action where i'm like no way involved i'm just on the <laughs> sidelines like it's cool to see like not just you but so many Friends of ours, yeah, you know, yeah. that it's we, fun. it's, it's nice to see people that we're all stuck into it. You know, mm-hmm. it's just what we know. It's what we yeah. love. It's not like there's any ulterior motives of it other than just to be as successful at the thing that makes us as individuals happy. Yeah. You know, I think there's something to be said there of also just like, just stick to it. Like, I think I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I don't think any of us identify as born gifted. It wasn't yeah. that like, yeah. Uh, for me, it's like, I don't think a camera is something that's inside of me. I think I just spent enough time with it to figure it out. Research and, think, and development. Yeah. You know, and I think there's something yeah. you said there of like, 
yeah, everyone starts bad at something and it's been great, like you said, to watch all our friends grow and achieve mm-hmm. so many things. And yeah, friends on tours, friends in different countries, just all over the world, quite literally. Yeah. Uh, and it's sick, but it's a, uh, yeah, I would say maybe one of those people felt like they were born to do whatever they're doing. But yeah. I think the vast majority of them would say like, I didn't think this was possible, but I just kept doing it until exactly. it became possible. Uh, and I think that's a really fun narrative to continue to be reminded of and to continue to yeah, being reinforced. Like we all need to hear it's, that. It's you almost have this like oh the initial and it's every artist I feel if you say it doesn't happen to you I know you're either some sort of strong human that I'm not aware of yeah but also we all have that like oh I wish I was doing that oh. yeah and it's like it's not like jealousy it's not envy it's more in the sense of like God damn what can I do to get there yeah you know yeah. oh this individual's doing that damn I wish I was doing that it's, yeah. It's like uh, whatever fires you up. Yeah. Whatever gets you going. Like, oh shit, I want to go get that. Like, whatever that is, you know? So, what fires you up? So, right now, you're, what I know about Justin Brown is go that off. Justin Brown is in 74 different bands. Jesus he's playing Christ. bass in all yeah. of them. Yeah. He's always. crushing in all of them. And he's also working at 19 different venues for 17 <laughs> different roles at all these venues for like somehow 26 it all fits hours in. a day. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I, I don't know how it all fits in, I don't know how it gets done. I'm grateful that it does get done. Probably a lot of the shows I've attended were made possible because of you behind the scenes. A small that's fraction I had a say in, just yeah. a small fraction compared to um, everybody else that's there. But yeah, I, thank, I you. Think thank you. Everyone else, I, I have this issue with cameras of like, is my camera really important to the show? And it's like, kind of. I think all of us is 3% important yeah. and that 3% matters everywhere. So even if you were just setting up a cable or fulfilling a rider is one of my favorite things yeah. to talk about yeah. you with. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Classic artist riders. And- but... So, yeah, so what's going on? What are you working on? You're kind of, yeah, going on the, the joys of how it, fun it is fulfilling to have things come to fruition, have things become real. So it's with anything in life, you have to be constantly working at whatever you're trying to do. And I'm always trying to get more gigs mm-hmm. just as much as anybody's trying to get like a, oh, I, I want to get a photo pass for that. Or, yeah. you know, it's really just trying to strive to get more and have that accumulate, you know, really have a, a, I personally am one of those people that thrive off of uh, working and and having that fulfillment there, mainly because of the sense of like, if I, you know, take two days off, holy shit, I'm a, I'm a, I'm I'm a terrible person. Why do I feel this bad? Like, it's like, no, everyone's like around you, like, no, you need a day off, you need to chill. It's like, I gotta, you know, I gotta go. So uh, between, you know, working at venues, stagehand, runner, as far as taking care of, like, who, people who aren't familiar with what running is, it's essentially just fulfilling whatever hospitality needs that the artist of the day of any genre really mm-hmm. wants. You know, usually it's, like, a grocery list and some alcohol, and that's really it. You know, hey, can we have some pizzas after the show? It's like, yeah. 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 Easy gig. Down with that. Stagehand. Just throwing up gear on stage, making sure it looks clean. I take pride in that whenever I do it. Mm-hmm. And then loading it all out, helping the band and throwing it in the trailer or big semi truck or whatever for, again, 26 hours a day. I think the flip side there that you're not mentioning is that you're then the, the primary or one of the primary proxies to the band. You're one of the, like when they're at the venue, you're one mm-hmm. of the main people they're seeing and interacting with. I think that's an yeah. interesting part of like, uh, van- bands have venues that they like going to or don't like going mm-hmm. to and if you yeah. I think we're fortunate to live in the northeast where there are so many venues and cities within an mm-hmm. hour or two but if you're in Texas and the Dallas Booker is someone that mm-hmm. no one likes or this is a stagehand who just made everything bad and people avoid that because of the bad experience like mm-hmm. I think there's a I remember that one time that guy bonked this and everyone this. has yeah. those stories mm-hmm. 100% of the yep. time yep. Uh, things happen so too yeah yeah and so it's a really interesting place there to be kind of on the front lines of yeah, you're doing manual labor. It's not glamorous, but it is really vital and important to it the is artist experience. Like the music industry as a whole, it's not made for everybody. So yeah. people will be like, oh, God, I didn't fucking expect this with a culmination of things. But I love doing that just as much as I love playing live music. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, there's there's a sense of self-pride and working with people I get along with. It's almost like just being in a band, it's like, oh, well, I'm relying on these guys to help me out, and they're relying on me to help them out and push Mm -hmm. cases or whatever. It's a teamwork thing with most about anything, but the primary aspect of it is just, damn, 
kind of got thrown into this and I love it. Yeah. So I always want more and that culminated into more shows that I'm playing with my band's Carnivora, more shows that I'm playing with uh, my band Low that I'm playing with now, which of course I'm sure we'll talk about at some point, but it's one of those things where I just kept wanting more. Mm -hmm. Like even from playing those church bands, I'm like, why can't we play six times a week? Maybe seven. (laughs) Fuck it. Oh, excuse me. I didn't mean to swear in here. Please do. Um, That's encouraged. Actually, uh, (laughs) it's so strange. The weirdest part about recording conversations is Mm -hmm. that people then in two weeks come back and we're like, oh, I just listened to this. And it's obviously flattering. It's awesome to have that. Mm -hmm. But some of those people are my parents. And so recently yeah. my parents will have hit me up and they'll be like, it was great listening to you, but you swear too much. And so now I think I'm determined to swear as much as humanly possible because I'm still petty and still a child. I grew um, up in my middle school yeah. years, like watching Adult Swim, yep. Metalocalypse. So if you want to put like yeah. a pinch harmonic or like yeah. a dive bomb or something <laughs> cool on everything I say, like I'll just be really awesome, you know, have, have Adult Swim send us a cease and desist. It'll be sweet. We'll, we'll make it happen. That's kind of a glow up. For remember that one time we did that thing we got yeah. sued. <laughs> to get sued by Adult Swim would probably benefit us. In I'll the long put run. it literally. I'll frame it. There, there's frame the all all what is all publicity is good publicity, which is a terrible sentiment. It, it, yeah, yeah, it's a very terrible. But sentiment. in this context, <laughs> maybe. Well, in that light, it's actually kind of cool. There. Mm, yeah, all right, I'm with that. But like some other things, it's like all right, yeah. That's yeah, I'm not, actually trying to get it sued by Adult Swim. I think that's my new goal. All podcast. right, let's get it going. We'll talk after the cameras are off. We'll <laughs> no, no, no. Right now. This is priority. Right now. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, pinch well, harmonics and dive bombs. We'll get sued soon enough. Trust me. Someone oh, will. Incredible. Someone will. Incredible. They're watching. I know they are. I can see them. Uh, yep, I hear them. But uh, we're talking about venues working, loading in. Mm-hmm. I think the... Yeah, I don't know. I think the just the hours and the, the tasks are always crazy. And it's always... I mean, it's... It's carry a fridge on the stage and get it set up. Like cabs are not oh like fun my God. things to As work with. As a bass with. player, <laughs> yeah. um, let me tell you, my back, it, it's seen better days. Yeah. I'm getting better now, going to chiropractors and stuff. But like between working shows and playing shows as a bass yeah. player, it's like, hmm, I do need a four 10-inch speaker cabinet, yes. Mm-hmm. But I do not need 5,000 things yeah. that are 1,000 pounds. And yep. then... That's Perfect. the sound. That's the sound. That, that's the sound of my bra- uh, of my back actually cracking. Oh, no, in that's half. the sound for swears. That's what we'll use. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll that was use a perfect that, example. But that's also what my back sounds like after I load out an Ampeg 810 like five times throughout the fucking day. So oh yeah. oh, you can use the crack there. Cool, <laughs> cool. Um, also to Peter's parents, uh, you raise one hell of a guy. Cheers. And uh, I, I I do I do say though you need to. Uh, I want to see you on more gigs. I want to see you on video gigs out in LA and Japan. Like, Oh, we want to fly this guy out. I want to see people have you on tour with them as a photographer, videographer, like all my friends and people I've hold, held so close, like over the last say 10 years, roughly. I always wish them success. I, I want people to grow. I want people to go like, yeah, if it doesn't work out, cool. But like, I always that. like seeing that dude. Seriously. And it, thank you, dude, <laughs> sick layout. <laughs> I'm staring at my washing machine. I'm looking at shower curtains hanging down, but on no, camera, no, 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 you, no, 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 no. We're studio. in a castle. It's a stu- I no, forgot. no, palace castle. It's some sort of palace castle dungeon hybrid. That's not a bad. Viva la Bam Castle Bam Basement. Mm, very cool, chic yes. you got going on. Yes, I feel like I could just hang out and have a beer here. You know, uh, that's kind of the what's happening. Oh. <laughs> more or less, more or less the objective right that? now. <laughs> that <was awesome. laughs> um, yeah, no, I think the the show part's fun. I think. I haven't spent as much time at venues and shows Mm -hmm. because it's just, uh, I don't know. I've been enjoying the music video side of stuff and the more production side of it. Oh yeah. I think in the, in the concert space, it was a great place to, to learn and get a ton of reps in and a ton of practice of the conversations and just the venues and how the world works. Yeah. Uh, and I think now I'm really enjoying figuring out how to recreate the same successes I've enjoyed at those venues of like, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the venues have unlimited, not unlimited money, but they have a lot more money than I do to craft a, a lighting setup yes. and a, a vibe. And uh, so it's been fun to kind of like, yeah, I don't have all those tools, but I have a certain amount of tools and how can I mm-hmm. use those tools to create something that looks and feels as cool to me um, and do it in a way that's kind of custom and unique to our night. And I think I, uh, I think there's something similar to a song where it's like, it's not that no one else could play the same bass riff that you're playing, mm-hmm. but it would have come out of them differently if they were starting from the same point A. Yeah. And I Absolutely. think a music video is the same thing that I enjoy, that it's uh, not that my music video is cutting edge and the most unique thing ever, but if 
someone else shows up to the same space with the same tools, mm -hmm. it's going to be a different thing. And they don't show up in the same space with the same tools. They show exactly. up in the same a space with their tools and everything. Yeah, yeah, on yeah. a different day with different weather, yep. with a different vibe and a different plan that they established. And it all, yeah, I think there's something beautiful in that uh, exploration process and that kind oh, yeah. of unique moment of like this is a everyone's an individual yeah. everyone uh, has different different thought patterns and how they're gonna attack a certain situation whether it be live venue photography mm -hmm. behind the scenes stage hand whatever it might be i think it really comes down to i mean i think it's really cool how like mm, a bass player will play their favorite bass player's whole live rig but not sound anything like them yeah. personally or like yeah. any sort of parallel you want to draw like sure. oh man if i had this For this and this camera. i'm yeah. gonna have the best product and you really realize like in the musician side of things it's like oh tone really is in the hands mm -hmm. it really comes down to how you approach it as an individual mm -hmm. and that's what makes it unique yeah you know you you play it humbly and say oh i'm just making music videos you know i'm using similar stuff like you know and that. but at the end of the day i know it, i know it's you i when i see somebody else's music video i'm like oh i know it's them you know there's always that like stamp on it mm -hmm. you know myself personally i don't do vocals you know it's one of those things where i speak cl clichely and enough for uh the bass tone yeah. you know like yeah. oh how do i make that unique how do i stand out how yeah. do I, how do I sound different from everyone, but also maintaining whatever sound I want for this genre, whatever Definitely. it might be? And I feel confident enough saying like, oh man, I kind of just have shaped it after like, we'll call it five to ten bass players all put together, mm -hmm. you know, in the sense of, well, that's me. Yeah. All these bass players are why I play. Yeah. You know, all these photographers are why I do it. All these videographers, all these painters, whatever it might be. You know. Yeah. There's a an interesting. Uh, the other cliche there is like you couldn't even be them if you tried to uh, oh, yeah. you couldn't be one of them if you tried to like uh, some and I think it's interesting that you're giving these 10 people credit mm -hmm. but and I probably would do the same thing of yeah these couple people I look up to are inspired by what I never account for and I think what you're not accounting for <laughs> similarly is like there is so much other stuff that you consumed along the way that is probably a bigger component that is underappreciated so for oh, yeah. me in the music video context it's like what are all the movies that i watched like i i loved liar liar growing up oh, i love yeah, the dark knight yep. don't know how either of those become a, irrelevant now but they stick. but 100 percent somehow in my brain that formed what a video should look like and or what a cinema mm -hmm. should look like in some yep. capacity uh and i think it's like yeah i would never credit liar liar a jim carrey movie yeah because <laughs> what got me to metal but videos the videography but and the somehow, cinematography i'm sure some, just i don't stuck. know somehow yeah. and i don't uh, I don't know if it's well shot. I haven't watched it in years, but somehow watching that got me to hear. And I think in music, yeah. it's a similar thing of like, yeah, I want to credit my 10 favorite bands, but actually there's so much life that went into oh, yeah. not that or so much mistake of you were practicing and you hit the wrong note. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you're like, oh shit, that's actually the right note now. <laughs> Wait, that actually sounds cooler than what we initially did. Yeah. Or that looks cooler, whatever yeah. it might be. Yeah. I love that. And, um, and similar to you, the videos and music and movies like say twister as an example mm. it's like mid 90s you know cgi just starting out mm. and it stuck with me i was like four or five when i saw it mm -hmm. i was like oh my god this is fucking awesome yeah. you know there's tornadoes <laughs> there's there's cool music and then i think my mom somehow got a hold of the soundtrack which was like van halen go. red hot chili peppers uh -huh. goo goo dolls uh the, some members from Fleetwood Mac doing a song and it just like all of this variety like Shania Twain that's interesting and I kept hearing that and I'm like oh my god and that was you know even way before I was playing music sure. that yeah. stuck with me at like you know four or five years old I was mm -hmm. like oh wow I also learned how to swear from that. There you go. And I ended up getting hot sauce on my tongue until I ended up... You got I, pretty good at that, actually. Well, that's the thing, though. I ended up liking it. The I'm hot like, sauce like, or the swearing? Uh, both. So the hot sauce ended up going on the ham and cheeses as a kid instead of like, oh, he, he can't say that. But thanks to the actor, Bill Paxton, I learned a lot of swears. There and, you go. Uh, Thanks, Bill. Rest that's in peace. Yeah, that's probably one of his biggest accomplishments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Learn, uh, teaching me how to properly swear. <laughs> properly. It's, it's like, I don't know proper. who let me watch that, but like, they should have known. Yeah. I mean, it's, at the end of the day, it's not my fault. It worked out okay. It's not my fault. <laughs> it's just who I am. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. So, 
We mentioned Carnivore. We mentioned Low that we're working on. Uh, so I can speak to Low a little bit of a... Uh, yes. Yeah, they've been around for a while. We're coming back as Low. A new song just dropped. Yes. Recently. I want to say within the last week or so. Um. Yes. Time is irrelevant to me because I'm trying to keep up with all the venues and shows and yes, everything that I'm so doing. Much. Um. But we released uh, Suffer Silence, the first single we put out. And um, it was really nice to come along board with those guys. Um initially for the last i'd say over 10 years at this point mm-hmm. maybe 10 years um it was known as a low points and over the past like two years uh had some member changes uh, they hit me up over the past this past summer like hey we look for someone to play bass and it's like all people i know uh Great people i trust yeah. again the camaraderie and trust we all love the same shit we all mm-hmm. hate the same shit <laughs> and yeah. it's at the end of the day of you know all right I, I, I know these guys. I'm going to get along with them. 100%, yeah. And with Carnivora, it's the same thing. Um, we put out a record late November, uh, Petrichor, which full-length record, which is risky to do in this day and age, but it's yeah. something that we've already kind of had on the books prior to the whole pandemic era. Yep. So putting that out, we've seen a great response to, and, awesome. and I'm so happy and proud to play in both of these bands with amazing musicians, amazing people, and again, just when you know it just sits right with people and m- the music and everything that goes along with being in a band and as a team, you know, it really comes down to when you know it's right and you all kind of want the same thing. It's like, all right, let's 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 use this whole group, mm-hmm. you know, all of our minds, let's put it together and let's see what we can do. And it's always an ongoing thing. It's mm-hmm. all about momentum. It's all about uh, making sure we have content. You know, making mm-hmm. sure we have the right person for the job of the recording, the videos, whatever it might be. And there's so many. That's what I always love about playing music and being a musician, seeing everybody else that behind the scenes. It could be, say, yourself with the photo and video. Say, uh, uh, the guys in the band like Guitar Tax that I like look up to myself personally. Mm-hmm. Like the guys behind the scenes that are like tuning stuff up and it makes you really grateful for the whole thing that happens. Like that 30 minute set is based off of all of this hard work. Yeah. Nobody here really knows about that. Yeah. Only you four or five people or six people, whoever's involved, like, no, like, Ooh, we did. We really, really put everything we had into that. Yeah. I'm glad we played, uh, to 2000 people. I'm glad we played to five people because at yep. least it's all kind of because again one to ten thousand I don't care it's always going to yep. be the same energy it's always the aspect of the, and I've always known this in my head and always went with it even in the church bands like there's playing a show then there's putting on a show sure yeah, you know yeah. you want to be that act you want to be that individual that it's like oh yeah remember remember that band remember what he did you know mm-hmm. it was cool you know because that's what influenced me i was always Mm -hmm. watching the bands growing up like oh that bass player he's running all over the place oh that guy he's he's really laying it down that's a sick riff like i I would wish i would have thought of that that Uh, kind of deal uh, i think there's an interesting balance there of uh definitely if by being eccentric and putting on a better show you can yeah catch more eyes and catch more attention and then i think there's like the kisses of the world who Mm -hmm. are I almost don't even know a Kiss music. I probably wouldn't know songs or recognize them. Oh, yeah. There's, but those faces yeah. are, they have transcended their music just by being, putting on a show. And yeah, it is the same it's, thing. It, it's uh, the awe, the shock and awe. And I think there's an yeah. interesting balance that every band on some level has to choose of like, we can sell out. We can just put oh, on yeah. all this makeup and do all this crazy stuff and sell a show that way. Mm-hmm. Or we can stand still and play our instruments and probably neither extreme is right for everyone. It's a balance but like it everything is, in life. Yeah, it, it's fun re- to watch at that. At least for me personally, yeah. like, again, you know, I'm wearing a racing shirt and some black jeans and yeah. some Vans slip-ons. Yeah. I'll wear some, you know, some sneakers, skinny jeans, and like probably this or a black t-shirt, you know, and that's not really far from what I would normally dress like anyway. Yeah. But again, it's all about what you want to conjure up as an image. Like if someone yeah. wants to go out in full corpse paint or, or a, as a Kiss cover band, like yeah. go for it. Do your research. Make sure everything's not – there's always that, again, constant balance of is this awesome? Is this mm-hmm. a great idea? Or is this corny and cringy? I yeah. don't know. Let's, let's get some other inputs in here. And, I, yeah. I mean I think Motionless and White is one that comes to mind as a current one that I love. Like I – 
musically. I've mm-hmm. enjoyed them, and they're always kind of a good band when I hear them. But I love watching them perform because I just love the dynamic, the whole mm-hmm. thing, the whole experience is a grand thing. Uh, and so, yeah, I think it's an interesting question of like how much do we lean into that? And yeah, you're emotional and white, how much do you focus on that? And how much mm-hmm. do you pull back from that and say, no, we don't want to be known as this thing? How much? Yeah, I think yeah. it's an interesting balance yep. there of. Uh, not wanting to kind of pigeonhole yourself into a, a theatrical thing, but also like that is them. That does feel genuine. It does feel real. It's um, it's the constant work and like, okay, even as an initial start, they started in a rehearsal space, garage, mm-hmm. basement, whatever you want to call it. But wh- whoever's, you know, at the helm, it's one of those things. It could be for any band. It's like, what do we want to conjure up? Say AFI for mm-hmm. an example. It's like they started out, you know, punk hardcore esque band and you know then look at fast forward that was early 90s then 2006 or whatever it was they put out uh december underground you know you hear the single miss murder everywhere and it's Mm -hmm. just chorus hook screamo part like cool and you have to focus on do we want to do this full-fledged imagery wise and make it seem like oh it's not really us but we're just doing it to do it Mm -hmm. motionless and white they always have had those influences. They grew up on, you know, your Alice Coopers. They grew up on, they, they were going to Slipknot shows. They were like, whoa, that's awesome. You know, that late 90s, early 2000s era of being young and seeing all of this stuff around you, like Marilyn Manson, all this stuff. And it was cool. And you wanted to make it your own, but also kind of pay homage to what you knew, mm-hmm. what influenced you, what made you want to do it in the first place. And it's always that balance. Motionless and White, I think you used as a great example because it's not corny. It's absolutely motionless and white. It's this whole thing of, is it corny? Is this some cool stuff that no one else has done and original? And they've definitely nailed that. But yeah. again, I'm sure everybody listening can always think of a band that's like, no, nah, that's kind of cringy. But again, it does come down to personal preference too yeah. and what you like as an individual. Yeah. Yep. Um, that's fun, my man. I, uh, my one fun conversation that I've had with people on here is the idea of what would young Justin say to Justin now? So now you're, you're in the venues, you're on the front lines, you're mm-hmm. playing the shows, you've yep. seen some crowds. Yep. Uh, and I assume there was a point when you're getting out of the church band going, dude, I just want to get to my buddy's basement and jam my five friends. Yeah. What, yeah. yeah. What is that? Yeah. Reflect on that. What is that? Like, what am I telling him? Like, Hey, this is what's the come kind of thing. Sure. And not to mention just like the friendly future me advice. Like, sure. Yeah. Murphy's law, everything. Yeah. And what I mean by that is anything that can go wrong. Yep. It's probably going to go wrong. Yeah. So you, the best thing you can do is just, you know, plan, you yeah. know, I have my materials at hand, say my cases, my equipment, and if something happens, it's like, oh, I got that one cable, just in case, you know, mm-hmm. it's because I had that one experience where oh, I don't have a cable or I have an extra tuner in one of my cases. That's because, oh, that wireless pack I bought very cheap and was skeptical about, oh, it stopped first song in of 10 songs. Awesome. I wish I had a tuner so I could know if I was in tune. Just little things like that. Murphy's Law, everything. And don't take everything so seriously. Yeah. Don't yeah. take it so seriously. Like, oh my God, we're not getting enough streams. Oh, we're not, uh, we don't, we're not, you know, doing enough shows. We're not touring enough. And I even tell myself that now. So not just mm-hmm. me when I was first Same. starting out, I need but to hear that me right now. now. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Preach, and, and Justin, tell me. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, I, I think about it even, we'll say the last couple of days, I'm probably yeah, yeah. sure I thought about it. Oh, stop taking it so seriously. We're in the midst of the holiday season, like couple, a like, couple days before Christmas when we're recording this. And even now, it's like, you know, say shopping for friends and family it can get stressful. And with anything that we're doing music-wise or uh, photo, video-wise, it's, it's like, God, i got to stop stressing over that. Whatever it is, it's like, oh, I'm at the mall and I'm shopping and, oh, God, I can't do this right now. Mm-hmm. Take a break. You don't have to do it right then. Yeah. I mean, unless it's like Christmas Eve at like 5 <laughs> o'clock, you know. <laughs> Uh, Which I feel like might be what you're doing in a couple days. December 23rd. That's your is day? my day off that I'm going to be like running and gunning. Dude. Okay. Running and gunning. But that's a, yeah. That's just probably a... Don't take anything too seriously. But the holiday season is... Eh, yeah. I'm wandering way off track here, but there's got to be a fun social experiment of like 
people based on when they do their Christmas shopping. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you could probably learn so much about people just... I do just... bits and pieces here, but I'm still, like, slacking hard. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We all have... We're all human. Oops. Yeah. What yeah. do you know? Yeah, I don't think anyone's too great about it. And sometimes I'm scared of the people who are great about it. Mm-hmm. But that might just be my own, yeah. <laughs> my own biases. I was, speaking of Christmas, I was folding stuff and they sequence all over the table. No but worries. I it's love all it. good. I love it. Well, my guy, thank you for coming through. I appreciate it. I think we're at a good little pause. Absolutely. Um, where should people check you out, find you? What should people look for? What's going on in the world? So, of course, um, at Carnivora Band. That's like Instagram and, of course, Facebook, all your socials and everything streaming-wise, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music. Uh, same thing goes for Low and our single Suffer Silence. We're going to have a music video coming out for, with a ton of new material. And it being the end of 2022 right now, uh, just vamping up for what we have planned for the next year, which is just everyone's trying to play shows, Low and Carnivora included, and just trying to get it going. Keep it consistent. Excited, my man. Yep. Well, thanks for coming through. Thanks for making the trip down from wherever you made the trip down from. Yep. I know it was a hike, but you made it. You did it. We did it. Oh, yeah.